dear organizers, dear colleagues. My name is Borian Petreski and I come from the Institute of Earthquake Engineering and Engineering Seismology from Skopje. And I'm going to present a paper about uh, residual drift estimation for uh, moment-resisting frames with still degradation properties. The moment-resisting frames are one of the three main structural steel typologies uh, used for seismic design of steel frames, uh, with the other two being the concentrically braced frames and eccentrically braced frames. These two structural types involve braces as structural elements, uh, which reduce the effect of any lateral loading acting on them and also allow for the plastic hinges to form in the braces and the special parts uh, called links. The moment resisting frames are characterized as uh, the most ductile structural type, possessing a large number of possible dissipative zones, following the fact uh, that the plastic hinges can develop both in the beams and the columns. Possessing the feature of uh, being the most ductile type, these structures exhibit very large deflections before the structural damage occurs. Um, observing closely, their ductility level is high and less material is used without the failure of the structure, but on the other hand, the large interstory drifts can lead to great damage uh, to the non-structural components. Uh, as far as we know, even though the overall stability of the structure can be easily satisfied following the weak beam uh, strong column rule from Eurocode 8, which allows for maximum energy dissipation capacity, uh, due to their low lateral stiffness, the drift effects uh, need very careful considerations. The residual floor drift demands uh, offer information about possible instability of the structure uh, after the earthquake uh, action. Uh, also, previous study has shown that once the residual drifts uh, exceed 0.5%, uh, the occupants of the buildings begin to experience nausea, headaches and uh, overall difficulty in daily life. Uh, Another factor that the, they represent is the necessity of demolishing of the structures because of excessive permanent lateral deformations, uh, even though they did not experience severe damage or collapse. Uh, another significance uh, is their relation to determining the technical and economical uh, feasibility of uh, repairing of the damaged structures. In order to address the residual drifts in moment-resisting frames, uh, design of the frames is performed according to European codes of practice. The studied frames consist of three bays of 6 meter span, a first story height of 4.5 meters and upper stories height of 3.5 meters each. For the initial modeling and design of the frames presented in this study, joints are assumed to be full strength uh, and rigid. The story plan is square with uniform span lengths in both principal uh, directions. The lateral force resisting system is placed at the perimeter of the plan, while the interior frames are assumed to be gravity frames. Regarding the codes of practice, uh, the Eurocode 8 provisions, uh, if seven sets of analysis are performed, uh, the average value of the seven peak responses is used for component checking. Uh, which is observed in uh, the case of this research study. Uh, therefore, two sets of seven ground motions are incorporated, uh, each representing the two distinctive scenarios, uh, namely the medium hazard and the high hazard seismicity. Uh, the acceleration response spectra of the seven selected records uh, are presented in the figures uh, along with the mean spectrum and the Eurocode 8 uh, target spectrum. The distributed plasticity models constituted of nonlinear elements are the most frequently used models in the nonlinear analysis of still moment frames and the core element used in the previous studies relevant to this. Uh, the elements possessing uh, distributed plasticity allow for the spread of plasticity along the element length. Uh, this approach is more computationally demanding than the lump plasticity approach with plastic hinges as it incorporates integration of the nonlinear cross-sectional response along the element length and over the cross-section depth. As opposed to the more computationally demanding uh, models, the, ob the objectively simple and effective lump plasticity models uh, can be adopted for assessment and design of the dynamic response of uh, steel moment resisting frames. 
If one models the plastic hinge correctly with the suitable inelastic behavior assigned to the rotational spring, uh, the software can perform equally accurate analysis of the structural system as it would when the complex and fairly accurate uh, nonlinear finite elements are employed. The material assigned to the main nonlinear finite elements of the distributed plasticity frame is a simple bilinear steel material acquired from the OpenSys database and uh, presented on the figure uh, on the left. Uh, the, deteriora the deterioration model, on the other hand, uh, developed by Ibarra, Medina and Kravinkler, referred to as uh, Ibarra Kravinkler model, presents the breakthrough of the use of the deteriorating stiffness models in the field of earthquake engineering. Uh, this model was later improved by Lignos and Kravinkler to refer to the asymmetric element hysteretic performance incorporating varying rates of cyclic deterioration in the two separate loading directions. The main parameters incorporated in this uh, modified model are also the most important input parameters for modeling of the lump plasticity frame in the OpenSea software. Uh, namely, the pre-capping rotation, uh, theta p, which represents the difference between the yield rotation and the rotation at the, at the maximum moment. Uh, the post-capping rotation, theta p c, which is a term explaining the plastic deformation increase after capping of the material. And the reference cumulative plastic rotation, lambda, which is a parameter defining the rate of cyclic deterioration uh, derived on the basis of the hysteretic energy dissipated or when the element is undergoing uh, cyclic loading. The use of uh, the elastic beam column elements ended with rotational springs has its uh, deficiency in the need of calibration of the model in order to obtain the real stiffness and strength characteristics, uh, which are easily achieved with the distributed plasticity model. The implementation of two totally different element types provokes the problem in the second modeling approach as the structural properties of the investigated members, uh, the beams, are a combination of the individual properties of two integral, of two integral uh, components. Um, two logical starting points for the solution of the stiffness calibration uh, would be the opposite extreme conditions. Uh, namely, either the stiffness of the entire element should be equal to the stiffness of the beam column, forcing all the element deformations into the springs. Uh, on the other hand, uh, is the assignment of infinite stiffness in the springs and resulting in numerical instability problems. For the purpose of avoiding uh, of these problems, a random multiplier n is implemented, uh, which can be assigned to the stiffness parameters of the sub-elements, and that is shown on the second and the third uh, equation on this slide. In order to emphasize the importance of the model calibration while performing the comparison of the distributed and the lump plasticity models of the steel moment frame structures, a simple pushover analysis of two cantilever beams uh, modeled using the both approaches has been performed. Um, according to the distributed plasticity approach, uh, the beam has been modeled as a one nonlinear beam column element with five integration points. Uh, While well, following the lump plasticity approach, the beam has been modeled with two separate sub-elements. The full length of the beam is covered by an elastic beam column element uh, with the same material characteristics as the nonlinear beam column finite element. Uh, this uh, approach is uh, modeled with ending rotational nonlinear spring, uh, springs, uh, representing uh, the plastic hinge with stiffness and strength deterioration characteristics. In the first instance, uh, the lump plasticity model was developed without consideration of the calibration, and it was observed that the elastic stiffness of the nonlinear beam column was by far greater than the stiffness of the lump plasticity model. Uh, the graph showing the comparison of the both approaches uh, before and after the calibration of the lump plasticity model uh, are shown uh, on this slide uh, on the left and the right hand side uh, respectively. For the need of residual drift assessment of the structures subjected to seismic loading, a pushover or a pseudo-static lateral force analysis, um, the American provisions of, uh, for codes of practice propose three types of uh, performance assessment, two of which are adopted in this research. The scenario-based assessment evaluates the response of a structure and its components to a user-specified earthquake. 
usually defined and categorized uh, according to the event magnitude and the distance between the structure and the earthquake source. Uh, another part is the intensity-based assessment, which is the most common type of performance assessment of structures, uh, used for computing the structural response for a predefined intensity level of uh, ground movement. Following the scenario-based structural performance, uh, the frames are subjected to medium and high hazard scenarios, while regarding the intensity levels, uh, two levels of 100% uh, and 170% are considered. Here, combination of the codes of practice can be observed, as the American intensity-based performance assessment is using the European performance uh, measures. It is observed that the boat modeling approaches experience a very small average residual drifts uh, from the set of seven medium hazard earthquake records at 100% level, uh, with the value of 0.35% being far from the Eurocode drift allowance. Uh, the near collapse performance level shows uh, more inconsistency regarding the residual drift distribution uh, at uh, this uh, case study. Uh, yet again, the floor drifts of boat modeling approaches are within the Eurocode recommendations, as the residual drift demand of every earthquake individually is within 0.8%. Uh, in this case, lower floor drifts are very similar, while greater variation can be observed at the most critical fourth and the fifth floor at around 20%. Uh, regarding the high hazard scenario, uh, greater variations are observed, uh, meaning the, stre the strength and stiffness deterioration of the materials uh, has taken place, uh, especially when considering the 175% the uh, intensity level uh, where the maximum allowed drifts are uh, reached. Uh, in the end, to conclude, uh, it is of utmost importance to be able to design the structures for predefined performance criteria. Uh, using the objective-based design, one can accurately predict the structural displacements during and after realistic earthquake loading. Um, the medium hazard and high hazard frames uh, fit in the same performance level classes for the equivalent intensity level transient analysis. Uh, the design level earthquake and near collapse intensity levels uh, drift demands classify both the lump and the distributed plasticity models into the life safety class. Uh, regarding residual drift evaluation, except for the estimated drift at the 175% uh, of the high hazard scenario. In order to address, uh, reduce and overcome the residual drift's effect on the structures, a uh, concept of introducing innovative uh, methods uh, and uh, systems uh, is ongoing. Uh, to conclude, uh, I'm showing the uh, a slide of, of our institute and thank you for your attention.